Hello, and welcome to my talk on choosing the right algorithm to help you build better machine learning models. My name is Dennis Badlov. I'm a worldwide tech leader for AIML at AWS, and I even have a PhD in this field. With Amazon SageMaker, you can develop your own cutting edge machine learning algorithm, train the model, and deploy it straight to production. But developing custom algorithms is not the only way to go. In fact, for many common problems, you can rely on one of 17 algorithms built into SageMaker. Whether you have some machine learning background or not, these are designed to save you a ton of time. If you've been watching machine learning talks from last reInvent, you might remember seeing a session with a similar title. Scan the QR code to watch that session on YouTube. Today's session is not a repeat. In fact, you can view the reInvent session as complementary because in it, we covered the two most popular built-in algorithms in SageMaker, namely image classification and XGBoost. In today's session, we will dive deep into a different but very popular built-in algorithm, namely k-nearest neighbors, or KNN. We will start with a quick overview of the SageMaker built-in algorithms and then focus our attention on the common tabular classification and regression built-in algorithms and how to best choose between them. Then we will dive deep into a popular KNN algorithm. You may be surprised to learn that despite its simplicity, there are many helpful and tricky optimizations that exist that make it a scalable algorithm when dealing with large data sets. As a result, it happens to be a popular algorithm for efficiently finding similar data points even beyond traditional classification or regression tasks. And you learn about it as well. Now, no technical talk is complete without a demo. And so I'll show how KNN can be used to predict house prices. Finally, I will close by emphasizing when it is appropriate to use KNN, mention additional resources and other learning opportunities. You see here all the 17 built-in algorithms that SageMaker supports natively. You are, of course, not limited to just these, as SageMaker supports all the popular frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, Chainer, Scikit-Learn, and others using which you can build your own algorithms. But why write code when you can use one of these popular algorithms for your use case? We can categorize these algorithms by the typical applications or use cases for each. This first group is naturally related to computer vision. Image classification assigns one or several labels to each image, describing it in terms of the scenery or objects present. Object detection is more precise in that it provides the location of individual objects via bounding boxes. Finally, semantic segmentation classifies each pixel as belonging to a particular object type. This next group is designed for a very common set of classification and regression problems. So if you have a so-called traditional machine learning problem, you're likely going to use one of these algorithms. I will spend a bit more time later on talking about the differences between these and specifically focus on KNN. Next two are about discovering topics in text documents or clustering documents together based on related content. Latent Dirichlet allocation, or LDA, and neural topic modeling, or NTM, are known techniques for this purpose. When it comes to classifying text documents, for example, as belonging to a particular genre or legal document type, Blazing Text is Amazon's algorithm for this purpose. It is also able to compute word to vec embeddings. Incidentally, SageMaker also offers a more generic object to vec algorithm for computing embeddings for arbitrary objects. Embeddings are n-dimensional numeric vector representations of objects, which may be easier to use in a machine learning context. Similar to embeddings, the principal component analysis, or PCA, is a technique for dimensionality reduction of input data and is used as an initial step in data preparation. Since uh, we've already moved on to unsupervised learning techniques, k-means is a popular clustering algorithm designed to discover structure in data. 
Random Cut Forest is an Amazon improvement over the popular isolation forests algorithm that is designed for general purpose anomaly detection problems. While IP Insights is specifically designed to uncover anomalies in the use of IPv4 addresses when they're associated with entities such as user IDs or account IDs. When both the input and output of a model is a sequence of words or tokens, we call this a sequence to sequence algorithm, which is most frequently used for machine translation, but can even be applied to audio tokens. When the input sequence is a set of related time series, Deep AR is the Amazon published algorithm for forecasting problems. And finally, both object to vec and factorization machines are good candidates when you need to offer recommendations. Now, let's take a closer look at the very common problem of classification or regression for tabular data. We're going to talk about linear regression, the ever popular XGBoost, and we'll then dive deep into K nearest neighbors. Linear regression is the simplest and very well understood technique, which in SageMaker parlance means linear learner. This model learns a linear decision boundary or hyperplane that separates the classes. The logistic function on the right is then used to turn a linear combination into a class label. Obviously, the linear learner does not give good accuracy when the classes are not at all linearly separable. But when they are, it is much more cost effective to train and very fast during inference. So um, don't discount the linear learner. It's also often used as a starting point to determine if there is a good signal in the data set and to establish a baseline prediction accuracy. Freeze this frame to scan the QR code to get to a blog post that gives you more details about properly tuning the linear learner. XGBoost is a popular and efficient open source machine learning algorithm for regression and classification tasks on tabular data sets, which uses decision trees. Like random forest, it is an ensemble decision tree method. Uh, but unlike random forest, the trees are not constructed in parallel, but instead in a sequence similar to what is shown in the diagram. We first learn tree number one to perform our classification or regression task. This tree will have plenty of errors or residuals. So to correct for these, we will train a second tree whose job it is not to solve the original problem, but to compensate the errors of the previous tree in the sequence, and so on. This technique is known as gradient boosting on trees, and it performs remarkably well in machine learning competitions. You can watch the companion reInvent talk that I uh, mentioned earlier for many additional details of XGBoost. But I'd like to highlight the fact that as of 2020, the XGBoost SageMaker container is often open sourced. And you can find out more by freezing the frame and scanning this uh, QR code. Another popular general purpose classification and regression algorithm is K nearest neighbors. Instead of constructing a parametrized class boundary, this method simply looks up k neighbors in the labeled data set that are nearest to the point in question. A simple class vote among the neighbors is then taken to produce the prediction. In the simple two-dimensional example shown, we have two classes designated with red triangles and blue squares. If we want to classify the green data point, we could look at the closest neighbors with only two classes, it's best to pick an odd value of k so that ties are automatically broken via a majority vote. If, uh, for example, we pick k equals 3, um, the uh, closest three neighbors consist of two triangles and one square. So the majority class is a red triangle. Now, if we expand k to five neighbors, uh, where the dotted line demarcates the neighborhood, we see that the prediction changes to the blue rectangle. So far, extremely simple. But once we look into the details, you will realize there's plenty of complexity here. It turns out we can have many different definitions of what it means to be a, a nearest neighbor. 
Remember that points in a multidimensional space are defined as vectors from some origin. The most obvious choice is to measure the Euclidean distance. So in this picture, the Euclidean distance is the length of the difference between the respective neighboring vectors. Here's the distance from the red triangle, and here's the distance from the blue rectangle. Obviously, red triangle being the nearest if we're minimizing the Euclidean distance. In SageMaker, the relevant hyperparameter is called index metric. And the Euclidean distance is called L2, since L2 is another name in the literature for Euclidean distance. It's an index metric uh, because we're going to be searching for nearest neighbors using a kind of search index. We'll see that later. There are situations, however, uh, where Euclidean distance is the wrong measure to use. For example, when the vectors represent words occurring in a natural language text, uh, what may matter more is the angle between the vectors, regardless of their length. If so, the angle between the green vector and the blue rectangle vector is clearly smaller. Um, so we may feel that this is the closest neighbor instead. In such cases, the right metric to use is called cosine similarity. Uh, because it's the cosine of the respective angle. The smaller the angle, the closer the metric is to 1, which is the highest possible value. So in this case uh, uh, of cosine similarity, we're trying to maximize it, not minimize it, as was the case with the distance. Yet in other applications, such as recommendations, not only the angle, but also the uh, magnitude of closest vector matters. For example, the magnitude can represent the popularity of the item. So even if a particular vector is not the closest by cosine similarity measure alone, we may still want to, be, uh, to, to recommend it to the user since most users have a preference for this item. For such cases, we want to use the inner product metric. It's called inner product because it's exactly that, uh, a scalar dot product of the vectors. The difference with cosine similarity is that it's not normalized by the vector magnitudes, but it's still a kind of similarity measure that we're trying to maximize. Except unlike cosine, there's really no upper bound on it. Another aspect worth paying attention to is that the neighbors are not made equal. You could weigh the vote by the respective proximity. In the example here, where k equals 5, the simple majority vote among k nearest neighbors is clear. So two out of five or 0.4 predict a red triangle, where three out of five or 0.6 predict a blue rectangle. Notice, however, that the two red triangles are much closer to the query point. So even if the rectangles form the majority, the triangles could win if we weigh them by proximity. Let's assume that in this picture, the distances to the five neighbors are as follows. Now, SageMaker KNN does not employ any weighing of votes. However, you can have the SageMaker KNN model return not only the predicted label, that is the end result of voting, but also the neighbors themselves and the distances so that the weighing can be manually applied if so desired. For example, Here's the formula that you could use to turn distances to similarities, and then use the latter to weigh the votes. In this case, uh, the weighted strength of red votes comes to 0.7, which is substantially higher than the 0.3 for the blue votes. Let's review the basic operation of KNN. First, all label data is loaded into random access memory. Note that there is really no training step in this basic operation. The model is really all the labeled data. Then, uh, for a given query point, we must iterate through the entire data set and compute the distances. Based on that, we can pick the k nearest neighbors as our voting cohort. And finally, depending on classification or regression tasks, we either find the majority class or compute the average value of the nearest neighbors. But obviously, uh, that second step could be quite expensive. Uh, if we have millions of data points, they may not all fit into memory. This is not such an uncommon scenario. So 
how can we reduce the cost of inference? The KNN algorithm in SageMaker uses the following four techniques to both speed up the inference and also reduce the memory footprint so that the entire search index fits into RAM. We'll go into details of each one by one. Just remember that all of these are essentially optional, and for many simpler problems, these can be skipped. Subsampling is a very simple, yet often very effective way of reducing the inference cost. Just as in other learning settings, we might have more data points than we actually need. For example, <clears throat> we might have an available data set of, say, 10 million data points. But we could do a good enough job with just 100,000 points. The relevant hyperparameter to use in SageMaker is called sample size. The specified number of samples will be drawn at random from the original data set, and only these will be used to pick nearest neighbors. Next technique is the so-called dimensionality reduction. Now, remember at the beginning of the talk, uh, I reviewed the built-in algorithms, and I mentioned principal component analysis, or PCA. The purpose of PCA is exactly the same, to reduce the vector dimensions in the data set, effectively projecting it to a lower dimensional space. However, PCA is trying to choose the dimensions and the corresponding basis vectors by explicitly maximizing the variance of the projected data. In case of nearest neighbors, we care less about the variance and instead want to make sure the relative distances between data points are preserved as much as possible. It turns out that according to Johnson Lindenstrauss' lemma, which is named after two mathematicians, a random projection may just do the trick while at the same time being computationally inexpensive. In fact, the 3D point cloud you see here on a 2D screen is an example of such a projection, albeit uh, clearly not random. You could imagine a more random projection such as this one. Now, once the projection is made, uh, the resulting vectors have fewer dimensions. While in this case, we go from three to two dimensions, in practical applications, we can try to reduce a many thousand dimensional space to something more wieldy, while at the same time, not losing much in terms of predictive power. To apply dimensionality reduction using SageMaker KNN, you need to specify two hyperparameters. The reduction target is the number of resulting output dimensions, which must obviously be somewhere between one and the original number of dimensions. The reduction type chooses a variant of random projection, uh, and FJLT stands for Fast Johnson Lindenstrauss Transform, the details of which you can find in the literature. Just keep in mind that the same exact reduction will be applied both during training and inference. How much reduction is appropriate is something you may only determine via experimentation. Uh, of course, the smaller the resulting dimension, the cruder the approximation to the original vector space. Also, the main disadvantage of this method is that um, the output is dense. So for highly sparse data or data that had a low dimension to begin with, this might not be the best technique. Next, uh, we're going to look at data set segmentation as a technique designed to quickly reduce the search space of nearest neighbors by eliminating most points that are clearly far away and which will never be neighbors. The idea here is to first run a clustering algorithm similar to k-means that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, which some, uh, with some arbitrary uh, specified number of clusters. Uh, for example, um, here's a data set and uh, resulting 10 clusters are shown. Each cluster has a computed centroid point shown with a white cross. Now, instead of comparing the query point to all vectors in the data set, we start by comparing it just with the 10 centroids and then pick one or more uh, closest clusters and discard all the others. In the picture on the right, the centroids are represented as red dots and the query point is green. We quickly focus the attention on the cluster with closest centroid and eliminate the far cluster from consideration altogether. 
That said, usually just looking at the one closest cluster leads to poor results, and it is best to consider the other neighboring clusters just in case the neighbors live there. By default, um, SageMaker KNN is looking at five closest clusters only. The relevant hyperparameters in this case are called index type, which must be set to phase IVF flat. And additionally, you need to specify the number of clusters by setting phase index IVF and lists parameter. If you leave it out, the number will be chosen automatically to be roughly the square root of the total number of points in the data set. So for 10,000 points in the data set, we will build uh, 100 clusters. This is a good time for me to mention that the SageMaker KNN algorithm is internally based on the open sourced FACE library, which was developed by Facebook. So if you're familiar with FACE, the concepts of data segmentation based on clustering and the next idea of quantization should be equally familiar. So another method of reducing space and computational overhead is to work with a lower precision. You can move to float 16 or a fixed point precision, such as plain integers or even binary values. A similar method is called uh, product quantization and you can find the relevant paper by scanning the QR code shown. This technique splits each vector into M subcomponents, and then each subcomponent is being quantized into a single byte. The major disadvantage of this method is that its, it, it's guarantees are data dependent and the hyperparameters have to be tuned. That being said, these techniques are very commonly used and, and are proven empirically. Imagine that our vectors have 12 uh, dimensions after dimensionality reduction already applied. This means that each vector is represented by 12 32-bit floating point values or 48 bytes. If we choose M to be four, we could subdivide the vector into four subcomponents. And via the process of product quantization, replace each component by a single byte. Thus, each vector is now represented by four bytes only, a 12-fold reduction in storage. To indicate that you want to use product quantization, you need to choose a different index type, namely phase IVF PQ, and then provide the value of M, which can only take on one of the listed values here. Furthermore, the number of dimensions must be divisible by the chosen M, and if this is not the case, SageMaker will automatically pad the vectors with extra zero value dimensions. Or if uh, the dimension reduction has been selected, we'll automatically adjust the dimension reduction to arrive at a divisible number of dimensions. The details of how actual quantization works is a bit tricky and can be found in the referenced paper. Now, we've covered quite a bit of ground, but for some additional insights, let me direct you to uh, this blog post on the algorithm. All right, demo time. Hopefully by now, you agree with me that even for such a conceptually simple algorithm, there's enough complexity to go around. But you could certainly start evaluating KNN for your problem using sensible defaults and avoid most of that complexity. Let me show you what I mean by demonstrating how KNN can be applied to a real data set of sold house prices in California that you can download via the QR code shown. In Amazon SageMaker console, we open the SageMaker Studio interface where I already have the demo notebook open. I have previously downloaded the data set from Kaggle and uploaded it to my S3 bucket here. Once we unzip the file, we see the train.csv, which we load in using pandas. We're ready to examine the data set. We note a good number of text columns, including the address, city, zip, and state, but also a good number of numeric columns, such as the target attribute we want to predict, the sold price, uh, lot size, tax assessed value, and so on. KNN feels like an especially well-suited algorithm for predicting house prices since this is exactly how the real estate agents determine the list price. They look at the comparables in the neighborhood. 
Since KNN can only work with numeric data, this gives us an idea of converting the address to a latitude-longitude combo. As it turns out, there's a handy geocoding package in Python called GeoPy. And here's an example of how it works by converting the address of the Seattle Sailing Club to the corresponding coordinates. We can now run this augmentation cell to insert the lat lawn columns. And after this is done, we can see that these coordinates were in fact added. Now I save the work into an augmented train lat lawn.csv and move on to additional pre-processing steps. First, we're going to make sure that numeric columns do load as numbers and replace missing values with NANs or not a number. Unfortunately, in this dataset, bedrooms column occasionally contains text data rather than the total number of bedrooms, so we need to treat it specially. There are categorical columns in here as well, and ideally we would replace them with indicator columns. Likewise, you can take text descriptions and turn them into numeric vectors using some form of embedding. But for now, I will leave this as an exercise for you, and we will ignore them for the purposes of this demo. So, we select the numeric columns only, and coerce bedrooms to have numbers. We notice here that there are quite a few missing values, so we need to replace them with median values. We choose median over mean uh, due to a number of evident outliers. Finally, uh, we look at resulting data both in terms of summary statistics, but also building histograms to better assess the distribution of the values. Now, we split the data into training and testing datasets and upload the resulting CSVs into S3. We're now ready to configure the train and test channels. Note how uh, the KNN container supports the label size parameter in the content type, indicating that our target attribute is in the first column and consists of only one column. We examine the number of feature dimensions and the total number of samples we will use. We set the sample size parameter to be the entire dataset in this case, so no real subsampling is going on. Finally, we create the corresponding estimator object, choose the instance type, and specify the relevant hyperparameters. In this case, we chose k to be 11, meaning we're only going to look at the closest 11 houses to assess the house value. Running the fit function is fast in this case, only 171 billable seconds because we're not really doing much training in this case, just formatting the data and evaluating the loss against the test channel. The loss is shown as both mean square error and also the absolute loss. So we see that in this initial attempt, we're off by about 500K in price on average. Keep in mind that this is California and prices go into several millions of dollars. So it's not bad. We set up an endpoint and run our own assessment against it by using the predict function. Note that in order to enable the KNN model to print the selected neighbors, we must add verbose equals true in the predict arguments. Here you see the predicted label, but also the neighbor distances and labels as well we see that sometimes our predictor is off by a lot, and other times it's pretty close, off by only single digit percentages. Not bad considering we did not yet take into account categorical variables and text descriptions. And this concludes our quick demo. Now, if we were to review the pros and cons of KNN, the biggest benefit of the algorithm is that it is able to recover unstructured or rather complex partitions of the space as seen in these pictures, and can adapt to different densities in the space, making it more robust. The other advantage is that virtually no training is needed other than constructing a search index for nearest neighbors. KNN can seamlessly handle a very large number of classes. For comparison, a linear model or a deep neural network with cross entropy loss must explicitly compute a score for each possible class and choose the best one. Additionally, KNN has excellent interpretability of predictions because they're based on similarity to existing objects. As a result, the question, why was my example given class X is answered by, because similar items are labeled with X. 
On the other hand, the inference is potentially more costly since we need to search in all the labeled data for nearest points. And we have already examined several techniques for increasing the performance of inference. Finally, the review of KNN would not be complete without mentioning a popular use case that goes beyond classification or regression. This blog post contains all the details but the basic idea is to combine factorization machines with KNN to produce recommendations faster. I encourage you to review it, as in this case, KNN is used to produce the top X closest items as recommendations uh, for a particular user without requiring any voting or averaging among the K neighbors. This is also another great example where built-in algorithms help you get started quickly. So, to summarize, for each of the built-in algorithms, ample documentation exists. Scan the QR code to get to the docs that include guidance on the choice of hyperparameters uh, and instance types. You're now probably thinking, which of these algorithms would help you with your use case and how to start? So many sample notebooks are also available for you to clone and adapt to your use case. By the way, if you want to keep learning, we offer over 65 courses, many available free and on demand, as well as virtual instructor-led training. When you're ready, prepare for the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty Exam, which validates your skills and provides an industry-recognized credential. And that's it. Please fill out the session survey below. And thanks for listening.